Good morning. My name is Mark Baltasari, and I am the statewide survey director and Miller Chair in Public Policy at, at the Public Policy Institute of California. Welcome to our virtual program today, featuring the findings of our latest PPIC statewide survey on Californians and the environment. Thank you all for joining us today. Today's event is supported with funding from the PPIC Corporate Circle and the Donor Circle. The survey was supported with funding from the RJ and Francis F. Miller Foundation and the David and Lucille Packard Foundation and the Wendy Hill Fund. We thank them for their support. For today's program, my colleague, Dean Bonner, will, serve, will walk you through some of the key findings from the survey and then we will discuss a few takeaways and answer questions from the audience. Before we begin today's program, there are a few housekeeping items to cover. As a public charity, PPIC does not take or support positions on ballot measures, nor does it support, endorse, or oppose any political parties or candidates for public office. And if you have a question about the survey, please send an email to the address on the screen ppic event questions at gmail.com. Please include your name and organization along with your question. I'd now like to welcome my colleague and associate survey director, Dean Bonner. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. And thank you all for joining us today. Give me a moment while I go ahead and share my screen. Alrighty. Um, <clears throat> So before I begin, I would like to just acknowledge my co-authors on this report, which include Mark, as well as survey analysts, Rachel Lawler and Deja Thomas. I would also like to, again, kind of just mention the funders for this survey, because this work is not possible without them. That's the RJ and Francis F. Miller Foundation, the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, and the Windy Hill Fund. So this survey is part of the Californians in the Environment series, which is now in its 23rd year. The survey, <clears throat> the statewide survey has covered many state and national issues since uh, the year 2000, um, when we began our series on Californians in the Environment. And for those of you who might be joining us for the first time or may be unfamiliar with the PPIC statewide survey, its mission is to provide timely, relevant, nonpartisan data on political, social, and economic opinions, which we hope will be used to inform and improve state policymaking, raise awareness, and encourage discussion. The PPIC survey covers public perceptions, uh, attitudes, and public and policy preferences. And for this series, uh, covers a multitude of issues related to the environment. Since this survey began in 1998, it is, uh, provided a voice for more than 400,000 Californians in over more in more than 200 general issue specific and regional surveys. This specific survey was conducted June 7th through 29th using the SSRS opinion panel. And while most of the interviews were completed online, um, just shy of 5% were completed via telephone, where people who may not want to complete it online or maybe could not complete it online are able to give their opinions that way. Interviews were conducted in English or Spanish according to the respondents' preferences. And our sample that we'll be talking about today is based on 1,700 California adults and just over 1,100 uh, who we've identified, or just shy of 1,100 who we've identified as likely voters. The margin of error for adults is 3.1, and it is 3.8 for the likely voter sample. So to get started, let's take a look at how uh, Californians think climate change is affecting their local communities. About seven in 10 adults and likely voters say that climate change is having at least some effect on their local community, including a quarter who say that it has affected their local community a great deal. One in three Democrats and a quarter of independents say climate change has affected their local communities a great deal compared to fewer Republicans. And across demographic groups, African-Americans and Latinos are more likely than Asian-Americans and whites to say that their community has been infected a great deal. 
as are women more likely than men. Notably, this perception declined sharply with, raising, with increasing age and income. And in this survey, as we have in the past, we've asked uh, several questions about specific climate policy goals set by the state and federal government that aim to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Today, as we have in the past, we find that about seven in 10 or more adults and likely voters are in favor of the state law that requires California to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions to 40% below 1990 levels by the year 2030. About two, or three, two in three or more have supported this proposal or policy since 2017. We also find that about seven in 10 adults and likely voters are in favor of the state's goal to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions as soon as possible and no later than 2045, while about one in three oppose this policy. And nearly three in four adults and likely voters favor the Biden administration's goal of attaining carbon neutrality by 2050, which that means that the US carbon dioxide emissions would not exceed the amount of carbon dioxide removed from the atmosphere. A similar share was in favor of this proposal last year. For all of these issues, partisans are divided with majorities of Democrats and independents in favor, and while, while most Republicans are opposed. And turning to something that's that's been in the news as of late and, and is actually impacting um, cities and states across the nation, um, we asked some questions this year about extreme weather. And as you know, California has had storms and snowpack of historic proportions last winter, followed by large amount of water runoffs this spring that has provided somewhat of a break from a long drought. More recently, we've had reports of intense heat waves as we get into wildfire season. And keeping this wide variety of weather events in mind, our team asked Californians if they themselves had experienced an extreme weather event in the last two years. We find that 45% of Californians say they have personally been affected by extreme weather event. Um, about half or fewer across demographic groups say this, with the exception of young adults, where this share peaks above half. Across the state's regions, residents in the Inland Empire, the San Francisco Bay Area, and the Central Valley say this, um, while fewer in Los Angeles and Orange San Diego hold this view. We also asked respondents if they think that climate change has contributed to this the state's recent extreme weather events. And we find that overwhelming majorities of Californians say it has contributed, while about two in 10 say it has not. Um, views among partisans are divided, with most Democrats and independents in favor, I mean, saying it has contributed, while a majority of Republicans disagree. About seven in 10 or more across demographic groups say that climate change has contributed, showing that this view is widely held among Californians. And strong majorities across regions say this, which shares highest in the San Francisco Bay Area and lower, lowest in the Central Valley. And when we look at whether or not how Californians view environmental laws in the context of, of the economy, we find that solid majorities say that stricter environmental laws and regulations in California, in California are worth the cost, while about four in 10 say that um, it costs the state too many jobs and hurts the economy. About six in 10 have said this, uh, said, um, that these policies were worth the cost since July 2020, while Californians were much more divided when we first asked this question back in 2013. Today, majorities across demographic groups say that the laws are worth the cost, and solid majorities in Los Angeles, San Francisco Bay Area, and Orange San Diego say this, compared to about half in other regions which is kind of notable given kind of the regional breaks of who has experienced um, some of these extreme weather events. 
And turning to um, another state law, which requires that 100% of electricity come from renewable sources by 2045, we find that solid majorities of adults and likely voters are in favor of this law. Um, and about three in 10 adults and likely voters oppose this. Majorities have been in favor of this since 2018. And today, while there's a partisan divide on this issue, majorities across demographic groups and regional groups are in favor. However, we do find that coastal residents are more likely to be in favor than inland residents. And while most Californians support shifting to renewable energy, a majority of adults say they are not willing to pay more for electricity generated by uh, renewable sources, such as wind or solar energy. The share saying they are willing to pay uh, more has declined over time and has only reached half um, in has only reached the majority in 2016, the first time we actually asked this question. Today, majorities of Democrats say they're willing to pay more, while most independents and Republicans say they're not. Across demographic groups, willingness only reaches half among Asian Americans and Californians 18 to 34. Notably, similar shares across income groups um, are in favor uh, or say they are uh, say they are willing. Um, while this perception declines uh, sharply as age increases. Across the state's major regions, San Francisco residents are the most likely to, to be willing, while residents in the Central Valley are least likely. And one of the ways that the state and federal government are trying to address uh, climate change and, and reduce greenhouse gases is by, is by promoting um, electric vehicles as a way to do this. And today we find that half of Californians have seriously considered purchasing an electric car the next time they buy or lease a car. And 8% say they already have an electric car. Meanwhile, four in 10 Californians say they have not considered this. Roughly half have said they have seriously considered buying a uh, electric vehicle since July, 2013. Today, we find that most Democrats and half of independents say they have considered this, while most Republicans say they have not considered an electric vehicle. About half or more across demographic and regional groups say this, with the exception of whites and older adults, where this share slips below half. And when looking at the link between electric vehicles and um, addressing climate change, we find that nearly six in 10 think that electric vehicles help address climate change a great deal or a fair amount. Democrats are much more likely than independents and far more likely than Republicans to hold this view. And looking at the share that say it helps a great deal, about a quarter or fewer among demographic groups say this, with shares highest among adults with only a high school diploma, lower income adults, Latinos, and renters. Looking across regions, residents in Los Angeles and the San Francisco Bay Area are more likely than residents in other regions to say that electric vehicles um, can help address climate change a great deal. We also asked a series of questions about um, vehicle-related uh, environmental goals. And what we found is that a slim majority of adults and likely voters oppose a statewide ban on the sales of all new gas-powered cars by the year 2035, while fewer than half of adults and likely voters are in favor. This, the perceptions today are similar to what we found last year. When we look at the, uh, the, the Biden administration's goal of having two thirds of, new, of all new vehicles sold in the USB electric by 2032, we find that nearly six in 10 adults and likely voters are in favor of this goal. And, uh, and when it comes to the, banning, the state policy of banning the sale of uh, new medium and heavy duty diesel trucks, um, 
we find that majorities of adults and likely voters favor this policy, while more than four in 10 are opposed. On all of these issues, a familiar refrain uh, arises with partisans divided on all of these issues. Most Republicans oppose all three, while most Democrats approve all three. When it comes to independence, majorities of independents favor banning the sale of new diesel trucks and having two thirds of new vehicles in the US be electric. But when it comes to the statewide ban on the sale of new cars, a majority of independents actually oppose on this issue. Moving on to, um, moving on to one of California's treasured resources, uh, its ocean and beaches, a strong majority of, of adults say the ocean and beach conditions are very important to California's economic, uh, to California's economy and quality of life. The share saying this has increased since last year, but a majority have said this since 2017. We find that majorities across partisan, demographic, and regional groups say this is very important. And looking at inland, uh, and it, it is notable that inland and coastal, res coastal residents have similar views when it comes to Cal the importance of California's beaches. And turning to policies related to California's coast, we find that fewer than four or 10 Four in 10 adults and likely voters favor allowing more oil drilling off the California coast. This is consistent with findings we've seen since, since 2015. And when asked about wind power and wave energy off the coast, overwhelming majorities of adults and likely voters are in favor. Similarly, overwhelming majorities of adults and likely voters are also in favor of building desalination plants off the coast. Further, when we ask about California's marine protected areas, we find nearly all adults and likely voters favoring maintaining the rules and boundaries around these national marine sanctuaries and California's marine protected areas in order to protect fish, wildlife, and their habitats. habitats. Notably, there is bipartisan support on wind power and wave energy, building desalination plants, and maintaining rules and boundaries of MPAs. However, when it comes to oil drilling, most Democrats and independents oppose, while about two and three Republicans are in favor. Notably, inland and coastal residents have roughly similar views when it comes to these policies related to California's coast. And turning to um, approval ratings of California's elected officials, we find that majorities, adults, majorities of adults and likely voters approve of Governor Newsom's handling of environment, our environmental issues, and majorities have been approving of him on this dimension since 2020. We also find that majorities approve of the state legislature's handling of the environment. However, at the federal level, we find that just shy of half of adults and unlikely voters approve of President Biden's handling of, on environmental issues in the U.S. And um, while just about one in four adults and likely voters approve of the U.S. Congress's handling of, of this dimension. Less than four in 10 have approved of, of Congress's handling of this dimension since 2011. And on all of these, we find that the partisan, there is a partisan division when it comes to the approval ratings on, on Newsom, the state legislature, and Biden. Um, however, when it comes to the US Congress, majorities disapprove across these groups. And before we um, turn it over to the question and answers, I do want to mention that we, there are a ton of other stuff in this survey. Um, and, and some of them are listed here. I would really encourage you um, to go to our website and examine the survey report, as well as the cross tabs and time trends, which are available among all adults and likely voters to see how uh, views differ across time and within subgroups. Uh, and be on the lookout for upcoming blogs co covering some of these issues, including a blog that's already on our website by Mark looking at um, the use of direct democracy as it comes to, 
uh, as it relates to the environment. And that concludes the presentation, but I would like to remind everyone in the audience to please submit your questions at ppiceventquestions at gmail.com. And please include your name and the name of your organization um, when you send those in. And with that, I will go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I will turn it back over to Mark. Thank you, Dean. Um, so we will spend about five minutes um, uh, talking about some of the key takeaways um, uh, so that we can we can keep on schedule and um, and and turn to the audience uh, questions. But I just wanted to um, uh, mention once again, you know, this being a survey that we've been doing since uh, June 2000. What what struck me as uh, really relevant and timely from this survey is the overwhelming majority of Californians who say that extreme weather events are a problem in their part of the state. Um, and the 45% who said that they have personally been affected by them. Some of you may be uh, experiencing uh, that today. Um, so, uh, but it's something that we've all become very familiar with and three quarters of Californians are tying these extreme weather events to climate change. So this has brought climate change really home um, to, to many Californians. Um, along with that, we saw in our survey, um, most Californians saying that climate change is, if not the top concern, one of several important concerns to them. Um, and also large numbers of people saying that climate change is uh, something that is impacting their local community today and something they see as having a serious effect on the state's future. All of this has uh, turned uh, many people's attention to what can the state government do, both uh, in terms of um, preparing for uh, the kinds of events that we have due to climate change, as well as um, making efforts to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, on those issues about uh, government response, uh, uh, people were more divided than uh, by partisanship than, than they were um, on, 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 on other issues. Uh, and, and let me just turn briefly to the, um, the, 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 the post that I have that went along with the survey today. One area in which there is bipartisan agreement is that uh, people think it's very important, Californians think it's very important to uh, have voters um, make laws and change policies about environmental issues through the ballot box. 80% uh, said that and on that issue, um, more than seven in 10 Democrats, Republicans and independents agreed and overwhelming majorities of likely voters also said it's important for them personally to vote on ballot measures about environmental issues in the state. And so uh, that's something, and again, uh, majorities across parties with that view. Two measures in particular that uh, one of them that for sure is going to be on the ballot, the referendum um, that would uh, require a yes vote now to approve a 2022 law that prohibits new oil and gas wells near homes, schools and hospital. That has very uh, solid majority support at this point, 64% of, uh, of, of likely voters saying that they would support that. We asked about a state bond measure. There are one of several that is under consideration at, during uh, this legislative session, one in particular that would be a $6 billion bond measure to pay for flood protection and climate res resiliency. Um, that also has solid majority support, 65% of likely voters. Uh, so. Californians will get a chance to vote um, on uh, environmental ballot measures in next year's election. We'll be following that closely. And in the meantime, they, they want to be able to take actions and vote on this issue. Yes. Any, any comments you'd like to make before we turn it over to Q&A? Yeah, I think that you know those last discussions about voting on these things kind of dovetails nicely with the fact that Californians have consistently over the years said that they want the state government to make policy separate from the separate from the federal government to address climate change. And they also want 
think it's very important for California to act as a global leader on climate change. And so I think th those, all of that kind of dovetails nicely with, with your blog post that you came out with today about Californians and, and, and kind of voting on these issues. So, you know, they favor it, plus they want to have a say, and they want them, California, to go further than the feds. Super. Thank you. Let's uh, turn to the questions. Uh, first one is from Stephen King, Environment California. Does the survey include any insights on Californians' feelings on solar power, particularly different types of solar power, like rooftop canopy or utility scale solar? By the way, I might add that if you hear some noise in the background, I'm working at home today and my next door neighbor's installing solar on their roof. Uh, <laughs> that's not the way I planned it, but that's what's happening. Uh, so I might uh, have to go on mute every now and then. But Dean, anything on, on solar? Um, if I'm not mistaken, Mark, we didn't ask a question specific on solar power this year, but we did ask the question about the um, 100 percent renewable energy and found that, you know, yeah. um, strong majorities were in favor of that. In the past, when we have asked about solar, um, we have found support as well on that issue. And so I think that is something that Californians are are, are supportive of. Yeah. And um, yes, uh, we didn't ask about it this time. We did ask about uh, wind, uh, wind power and wave energy projects, by the way. And those had very strong support, over over seventy five percent supporting that, which we've uh, we've seen in our past surveys. Um, and so I would just mention that in terms of types of renewable, but more about solar in the future for sure. Question number sure. two: California has a wide variety of regions, each with their environmental and climate conditions. What are the key takeaways in terms of how people in different parts of the state think about climate and its impacts? Dean? Yeah, well, it was interesting, you know, when we look at kind of um, how Californians have experienced extreme weather, that's, mm -hmm. that is something that we did see some regional differences. And, um, but when we look at the kind of the overall, you know, climate questions about, you know, about policies, we do see that there are regional differences with the more liberal leaning areas of the state tending to be more supportive, but there is a baseline level of support across all the regions on many of these issues. Yeah, and I, I would um, uh, just want to emphasize the fact that we, this is a survey, if you look at our cross steps, we, we, we look at inland and coastal and when you consider that there are different um, uh, political dimensions of inland and coastal, the inland areas being more Democrat, Republican, coastal more Democratic, what is always surprising to me is a level of, of support for environmental uh, protection um, so regarding oceans and other issues that we see um, inland and coastal in California, that uh, people who um, uh, live in various parts of the state have a shared and common interest in um, um, having a good environment, shared and common concerns about what the future might hold. Um, question number three, your survey shows that water and drought is California's top environmental issue today, even after a year in which we've had you know, all, all this rain. Um, have, have there been any notable changes in the top issue over time? Dean, <laughs> what's your take on it? And then I'll-, I'll Yeah. You know, last year, if I'm not mistaken, these were the same top three issues, although um, water and drought was about 10 points higher last yeah. year, um, but it was the same three kind of issues um, in the report last year. And over time, you know, water and drought, depending on the year, has always hovered between one and two in in recent years, if we as we as we have had this extended prolonged drought periods, and and so that is um, really interesting in the fact that wildfires and climate change have 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 kind of consistently been in that top three or four issues as well. So these are things that definitely Californians are thinking about when they think of the environment. Yeah, I'd say for me, the notable change in the top issues over time and the top three are wildfires. Um, and um, that uh, went from nowhere to several years ago being among people's top concerns. And if we also look at what people say are their concerns about the possible impacts of in the future, 
it's it's water and drought, um, it's wildfires, it's climate change, um, and, and it's heat waves too. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing more of the latter going forward, just given what, what we're experiencing already this year um, around the world and around the country um, and upcoming now in parts of California. Uh, question number four, what does the survey say about how different populations race, ethnicity, income, other factors have been personally affected by extreme weather events in recent years. I mean, for this one, I would say that um, what the survey tells us is that this has been a shared experience by region, by race and ethnicity, by income, by age, by, by demographic and, and geographic um, uh, different dimensions, that, um, that this is something that, um, that everyone is experiencing. Um, and uh, it is is feeling um, uh, vulnerable about. Um, did you ask about the topic of water management addressing drought flood in this survey? Um, not specifically about water management. We did ask, you know, considering kind of um, the effects of climate change and if people are concerned about more severe drought. Um, droughts as it relates to that or more severe flooding, which we did find kind of, you know, high levels of, of, of concern for those issues as it relates to um, climate change making them more severe. Very good. Yeah, I, I would, I, I would uh, agree. I, I think it's, a, it's an issue of ongoing concern, water management, addressing the drought and flood. And I would say um, the, the the question that we asked about support for the state bond, uh, which is in the mid 60 percent, very strong support for a state bond that would deal with climate resiliency, drought, flood protection, things of that sort, um, is an indication of the extent to which people are, um, you know, really um, concerned about this issue. And once again, emphasizing the fact that they want their state government to be doing something about issues involving um, water, uh, issues involving um, wildfires, and um, all the related issues around climate change that are facing the state, both um, preparing uh, as well as doing what we can to bring down the, 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 um, the greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Those two questions on the on the preparing and addressing, where we found both in the mid fifties, uh, mid to high fifties, um, support for the state doing those things. Yeah, yeah, and then specifically around that in the bond. So yeah, okay. So um, I'm going to close with this question, um, Dean, because um, I didn't actually get to ask you this after we finished the survey. Um, we we're just so busy, yeah, preparing for this day. Um, anything that surprised you? You know, it is kind of surprising that Californians continue to support um, all of these, most of these policies when it comes to the state and federal action, despite the fact that they aren't willing to spend more for renewable, for electricity on, on, on renewable energy. They believe that it's going to increase gas prices. Um, there's kind of mixed readings when it comes to doing things on the environment as it relates to jobs. And so if you just looked at those questions in a vacuum and then tried to like predict how Californians would feel about it, um, some of these issues, you might expect Californians to not be quite as supportive as they are. But, you know, as we've seen, Californians remain supportive despite the fact that they think it's gonna increase gas prices, the, despite the fact that they aren't willing to pay more for electricity from renewables, and the fact that three in 10 um, say that's gonna cause there to be fewer jobs, and I think just about two in 10 say that it's not gonna affect the number of jobs. And so that to me is very interesting when it comes to kind of the relation between the perceptions of what would happen and the support for the uh, policies. Thank you. Is there anything um, so, that, support, that surprised you, Mark? Yeah. Um, so what surprised me the most was um, the degree to which people said that global climate change was impacting their local community. Um, we haven't asked about that before. And that there, there was a fairly significant number that said a great deal or to some extent um, because that has real meaning in terms of um, you know people's 
uh, daily experiences. And related to that, the, the, the extent to which people said that extreme weather events in the past two years have personally um, affected them. So uh, that kind of bringing the global climate change and the state actions to the local level and the personal level and realizing how many people are being impacted, that helps me understand then um, where the support for, um, for, for, for different um, policy um, activities um, is coming from and where potentially um, people's um, willingness to make changes um, uh, in relation to climate change um, might be drawn from because it's it's local and it's personal. That's very true. So um, we've reached the end of our program. I'd like to thank you, Dean. Um, and thank I'd you, like Mark. to thank everybody on the survey team too. Uh, yes. Rachel and Deja weren't with us today. Um, but thank you for, um, for giving the briefing and um, for our colleagues. I also want to thank our colleagues in communications who um, made it possible for us to have a report, which we delivered today, and have a wonderful program with you all um, this afternoon for, for all that you do. And I just want to thank uh, everybody who's involved in this um, enterprise um, for, for their support. I'd like to thank our funders, who, of course, make it possible for us to, to do the survey and have these um, events. And thanks to all of you for joining us online today. If you pre-registered, you'll get a survey later on. Please fill it out and let us know what you thought about this uh, program and how we can improve going forward. And please be safe and have a good afternoon. Thank you.